who doesn't love a road trip? This one is full of surprises, beautiful landscapes, great views, and not so great views. <laughs> Every trip has its ups and its downs. If I didn't know any better, I would think we were here yesterday. And by here, I mean here. Uh, not, not those other places. <laughs> like ghost stories. <laughs> but instead, it's bear stories. Oh, I should turn off the radio. But that's how the best memories are made. This is Road Tripping North Carolina. Wait, have you watched the first three parts of the series? If not, be sure to do so before continuing on with this video. All three of those videos are linked in the description below. <laughs> All right, let's pick up where we left off. We are now leaving Smokemont Campground and we are headed to our next destination, which is actually kind of multiple. <laughs> I actually had a bunch of hikes that I wanted to do today. I had them planned, but with how things went yesterday, AKA the uh, Water Rock Knob Wreck Plane hike. If you haven't seen that video yet, it'll be linked in the description. You'll have to check it out because this is a whole series. But anyways, um, yeah, <laughs> that really wore us out. And that was day one. So we decided to kind of just relax and recuperate today and take it a little more chill. No hikes for us. I mean, we did hike to see sunrise and that was a hike. So we are now going to stop at like all the roadside attractions basically on the Blue Ridge Parkway but don't require a whole lot of hiking because we just we just don't have the energy for that today. And these roadside attractions I'm referring to are all showcased in the first video of this series. We travel about one quarter of the Blue Ridge Parkway and make some scenic stops along the way until we reach tonight's camping destination. So if you haven't seen the first video and want to see all the cool places to stop along this end of the parkway, be sure to check out part one, link below. It smells like Christmas. I love it. Here we are. This is so neat. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Your nose is falling. Yeah, you are. I think I could hang. I could hang my hammock up back here. From here at this tree to this tree, I can hang my hammock up. I love this. <laughs> so here's the restrooms. We quickly realized our newest found fear could become reality. I don't know why we thought that bears didn't like 6,000 foot plus elevation, but clearly they do. And we were warned of this, both at the restrooms, in the parking lot, and at our own campsite. This is like the fairy wonderland kind of uh, forest like here and I get to sleep in the middle of it. 
I'm so excited. Also, I like kind of MacGyvered this, <laughs> but this is my poncho. I've never used it before, and I figured it's a perfect hammocky and rain fly. Not really perfect because it doesn't go all the way, which will be a problem if it does rain, but hopefully it doesn't rain, and if it does, I'll be able to move it a little bit so that it covers all the way. Hopefully it doesn't rain because <laughs> it's going to be cold tonight. It's going to get in the 50s. We're literally two seconds into this hike. <laughs> Look, hiking trailhead. Our view. <laughs> yeah, we've already seen a bear. Hopefully we don't see any more on this hike. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. It's so pretty. Yeah, so we have to go this way to the summit. So yeah, we're already done. That was easy. I don't know where the observation tower was though. Unless it was talking about this. If I didn't know any better, I would think we were here yesterday. And by here, I mean here. Uh, not, not those other places. <laughs> This is what happens when you eat dinner after sunset instead of before. I already had my dessert. Dessert first, of course. Oatmeal raisin cookies, which Desiree doesn't like, so more for me. <laughs> I've literally only ate one, though. I had my appetizer of cashews and pistachios. And now we're about to have our main course, because I'm just eating things out of order now. Uh, mac and cheese. <laughs> what we were going to have the other night, we are now having tonight. So, exciting, exciting camp, camp foods over here. We haven't had a fire this whole entire time. We're not going to. 
<laughs> Too lazy and broke. Well, more of we're not here at the campsite long enough. Like both campsites were staying only one night, so it's just not worth it. Dinner just got better because I <laughs> I was using your light, so I was like, "What happened? <laughs> you oh. looked away." <laughs> Okay, an idiot. Okay, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't tell you that you were part of my light <laughs> lighting crew right now. So I saw the frozen on the front and I didn't realize it's because the mac and cheese is frozen. Look, there's a little Olaf. 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 <laughs> Olaf. I don't know. Like ghost stories. <laughs> but instead it's bear stories. Oh, I should turn off the radio. Anyways. Ghost stories. Or bear stories from <laughs> Mount Mitchell. <laughs> We're just over here trying to eat our mac and cheese. <laughs> we heard a rustling in the woods over there. And we heard a snap. <laughs> and then we heard more rustling. And we're like, something's definitely there. And Desiree shined her headlight that way, her headlamp. And we didn't see anything. And then we heard more snapping. And then I thought I saw two beady eyes glaring back at us. We both stood up and we were getting ready to run before we realized what it was. And I'm like, I know there's a campsite over there. But there's so many trees in between. Like, these are all very private campsites. Yeah, it's just somebody over there setting up their tent. The light that I saw, the two beady eyes that I saw reflecting, was just like their light or her light reflecting off of their stuff. <laughs> so... No true bear stories yet, other than what we've seen on the road. Hopefully we don't see any tonight. <laughs> but we are both super paranoid now. <laughs> since we've seen since we've seen two bears on this trip. Oh, or technically four. Because <laughs> we've seen And one elk. Two oh, No, four elk. Or was one of those the same elk? Nah. I'll say four. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've seen one bear last night. We saw one bear when we were really close to the entrance to the park here with two cubs so and there's bears up here we're a bit paranoid because <laughs> it's awfully quiet up here unlike smokemont smokemont it was nice being by the creek because it drowns out all the noise whereas up here it is silent see you can hear her slurping <laughs> <laughs> is it good delicious <laughs> I love the chewiness. I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, Desiree made me mac and cheese, and I'm I'm not too pleased with our main course here. Very much soup. It's, it's cheese water soup with some chewy undercooked pasta that sticks to your teeth. I give it... Three stars out of five. That's being generous. Just because Desiree made it. <laughs> and bought it. So, I mean, maybe I should give her five stars. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, I, I hope I don't regret it. I hope it's a good a good experience. We'll, and a we'll bear. Soon. And a bear. And a bear don't come get you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me tell you that story, too. <laughs> that was the other funny thing that you missed. Um, I was saying my biggest concern with the hammock beam right there is it's, like, in the woods, but it's kind of like a pathway. And I'm like, if a bear were to come up to our campsite, and if it doesn't have good night vision, because I don't know if bears have good night vision or not. What if it walks into me because it doesn't see me? <laughs> and then it gets mad and then it mauls me to death. And then you fight back. <laughs> and that's what, that's what I said. She said, and the problem is you swing. And I'm like, yeah, I swing back. <laughs> I, I, I attack back, but unknowingly. What if I'm asleep through it all? Because I am a heavy sleeper. And you knock about, you look over, and there's like a bear. <laughs> <sighs> yes, fun times. Here's chronicles of us being sleep deprived and... <laughs> And eating uh, chewy mac and cheese. <laughs> and we're paranoid of bears now. More than ever. So we are back at the campsite, eating breakfast now. I got a breakfast smoothie, and Desiree is eating chicken alfredo. Who does that? Who eats chicken alfredo for breakfast? Comment down below if you think she's weird or not. I probably get a bunch of comments saying like, oh, that's great, like, I do that all the time. You're the weird one, Amanda, for only liking breakfast food for breakfast. You hear the bear? That's the bear we heard last night. 
It's those people taking down their tents that they set up last night. <laughs> no bear. Just, just people. <laughs> So when I slept in this hammock last night, I should have slept this way with my head facing this way because it's actually more up, even though that's the downhill side of the mountain. But I didn't realize that I had hung the hammock up the way that I did. I was able to get it up higher on this tree than I was on the other end. So, so I had trouble, kept slipping down and stuff like this would have been so much better. But it wouldn't have made that much of a difference because like the real issue was actually the cold <laughs> so i had two blankets that i layered underneath and then i had the one that i was going to wear over top and nothing else and i'm wearing i was literally wearing shorts and a t-shirt and it got down in the 50s and the problem with the hammock is you got to like cover the bottom and the top because you're not like on the ground like you are in a tent you're you know airflow all around so it's pretty cold and yeah, it got cold and it took me like three hours of like sleeping, waking up, sleeping, waking up, repositioning and stuff, like trying to figure out the best way to like make this work. So what I concluded was like one, this does not work because your feet end up being like higher than you and then you have like bad blood circulation and the toes get cold and on. It's just not good. So then I was doing this. I was alternating. I'd have like one leg bent and one leg straight and then I would alternate and then for a little while I had both legs like this together but then this is all open space under here and that got cold really quick so then I concluded that I needed to ball myself up but the best way to do that is to lay on my side which I'm a side sleeper anyways but I didn't know if I could sleep on my side in the hammock but it turns out you kind of can it's actually quite comfortable and then that way you can stay balled up and this is how I slept last night I slept for like I'm more than I did the night before <laughs> once I figured out to sleep on my side and have everything like covered perfectly well or as best as I could I was still cold like I still needed more cover over top and I just didn't have that and I just had to live with it but I used this jacket as like a pillow I didn't wear it like I'm wearing it right now like I had it as like a pillow and like a backing and yeah I slept from like 1 30 till the alarm went off at 5 a.m and i want to slept past that the alarm woke me up because see sunrise and i was mad because i was like i'm finally sleeping well but uh, sleeping in the hammock versus the tent that was my real question and i don't think it's fair enough for me to judge that just yet because it's like two different campsites and two different situations where it's like at the campsite where we were at before it was a lot lower elevation it was a lot warmer so i got cold but the blanket that I'm using now was just perfect for warming me up. Now, in the hammock, that is not enough up here on the highest peak east of the Mississippi. So, yeah. Uh, in retrospect, I was like, the sleeping bag might have been good, but it might have been too much. Because my sleeping bag is for, like, cold weather. It wasn't quite cold enough. I think I just needed, like, another blanket to put on top and I probably would have been perfectly fine. The other issue was that the blankets I had layered at the bottom, once I got in, they just slid and went all over the place and I could not get them situated. Because like once you're in the hammock, you can't like move stuff underneath you very easily. So yeah, it was a pain. It was frustrating. I also had a hammock pillow that was just too inflated or it's just like it hooks to the top, like it hooks up there and then it comes down to here. And I think it just, it didn't come down far enough or it was overinflated and it was like, it was like hurting my neck and stuff, so I didn't use that. I ended up tuck rolling it up and tucking it up while I was still inflated so that I could sleep. And I used this as a pillow more so because I almost don't need a pillow in a hammock, honestly. I thought I might, but I don't think I really do. Just like something very small, like a rolled up jacket or a rolled up blanket or something. So, yeah. Hammock camping. I 100% want to try it again, but... 
last night was a little bit miserable. It wasn't as good as I had hoped, <laughs> but it's still like, I mean, I did end up sleeping. I slept better last night than I did the night before. I can't say that much. So that's pretty good considering I wasn't like super tired when I went to bed either. So yeah, um, I mean, you just, you can't beat this view. Like this view is just so beautiful. Like you wake up and this is what you see when you look out. We are getting ready to pack up camp now. And then we're going to go to the gift shop. The guy said the gift shop opened at like 930. Because when we were up there at sunrise, he was coming through and like picking up trash. So we are going to go watch, watch the sunrise. We did that earlier. I do need more sleep. <laughs> we are going to go to the gift shop and then head on out to our next destination. I just love this place so much I don't want to leave. But it's time to take the hammock down, pack up, and go home. Goodbye, favorite campsite. May we meet again one day, hopefully. <laughs> And this building houses both the Balsam Gift Shop, which has some really cool souvenirs and really good prices. Also, taxes included in the total price, which makes paying with cash way easier. But that aside, the museum is to the left, and it actually has a, a lot of cool things in it for how small it is. There's interactive displays, there's like 3D models, there's audio recordings, there's stuffed animals as in taxidermized animals <laughs> and there's even the original headstone for Elijah Mitchell which is who the mountain is named after and that concludes this week's video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up subscribe and tune in next week for the final part part five of this adventure